Thank you very much. Uh, conflicts of interest. I run a contract research organization. That's my conflict of interest. And I'm going to show you the main talk is one of the studies we've done recently there. Um, the question we're addressing is whether viscous fiber has any influence on subjective appetite and food intake in an acute sort of setting. And I would say the, uh, the uh, evidence isn't strong in that area, uh, and it's conflicting. So this is one recent meta-analysis which basically counted up the number of studies which uh, for viscous and non-viscous fibers on subjective appetite in an acute setting after a test meal containing these fibers or food intake. And it was concluded here, you can see the viscous fiber significantly more studies with a significant effect than for non-viscous fibers for subjective appetite and a non-significant or just missing significant more studies showing viscous fiber significantly reduced food intake. So that was one, but it, uh, that was in 2011. More recently, uh, Joanne Slavin's group published a study looking at the effect of fiber and satiety in food intake, and they concluded that uh, most acute fiber treatments did not re in induce and not enhance satiety, didn't make you feel fuller, did not reduce food intake, and neither the fiber type nor the dose was related to the effect. So we still are left with a question about that. Um, a little bit later, more recently, there's been studies suggesting from one group that oatmeal increases satiety and reduces energy intake at a subsequent meal. The first study, this is from Rubello, first study showed comparing a ready-to-eat cereal, which is Honey Nut Cheerios, in milk versus oatmeal, instant oatmeal in milk, so they contain 360 calories, and the beta-glucan contents are here and the oatmeal elicited significantly greater satiety, a fullness feeling. And a few years later, they went on to, sh to repeat this study. They found the same effect on fullness, but they also now measured food intake uh, on an ad libitum meal and showed a significant reduction of food intake after the uh, instant oatmeal compared to Honey Nut Cheerio breakfast. So again, these breakfasts were just cereal and milk. They then, in the middle, they had done a study looking, comparing instant oatmeal with old-fashioned oats. This is Jim's uh, idea. And here, the, they were smaller test meals. They were just cereals and milk. And they found a stronger effect on satiety for actually the instant oatmeal. And the Honey Nut Cheerios and the old-fashioned oats were fairly similar. You see the effect dissipates later on because, I suppose, of the smaller energy intake. And they put this down to the fact the instant oatmeal developed viscosity more quickly than the, than the uh, old-fashioned oats. So what determines satiety? This is a very complex thing, and I'm not going to go through this. We're going to look at a few of the factors. Uh, we can think about gut peptides, the CCK, GLP-1 hormones, which influence food intake and satiety feelings. And the question is, what does O-beta-glucan do on these? And this is one study looking at uh, oats uh, control, test meal with oats with various different amounts of beta-glucan increasing. And they measured the viscosity of these test meals uh, in an in vitro system, just mimicking the gut. And indeed, the viscosity was directly related to the amount of beta-glucan. So, uh, it's not clear whether this is a viscosity effect or a dose effect. But what they did find was that um, oat beta glu all of the oat cereals tended to reduce subjective appetite. Uh, you felt less, more full compared to the control, but there was no effect of dose or viscosity. Energy intake tended to be reduced, no effect of viscosity. Ghrelin was not affected, but CCK apparently seemed to be increasing in relation to the dose. So high CCK would reduce our satiety feelings. On the other hand, uh, here's another study showing that uh, looking at beverages now, 300 calories, identical beverages, except they use 
five grams of oat beta glucan with low or high molecular weight. So the viscosity was about tenfold greater in the high molecular weight. And I think inconsistent with many other studies looking at foods which reduce, reduce postprandial glycemia, all of the, it, the insulin was lower with the high viscosity, CCK was lower, PYY was lower, GLP-1 was lower. This is what we'd expect, significantly lower. This might suggest, well, you're not going to feel so full because these, these hormones make you feel fuller. But in fact, although subjective appetite was not different, there was actually significantly less food intake after the high viscosity um, meal. So conflicting results uh, in terms of gut hormones. What about gastric factors? One of the key um, things that are thought to affect um, food intake and satiety is the emptying of the stomach. Stomach distension will, will reduce appetite and food intake. And again, we have conflicting results. Here's a study looking at uh, a drink with and without oat beta glucan done in both subjects without diabetes and with diabetes, measuring gastric emptying using a sort of a, a uh, x-ray of the stomach with a me measured meal, marked meal. This is showing in both sets of subjects, the oat beta glucan meal delayed gastric emptying. Here's another study though, looking in, at biscuits with various kinds of of fiber, not oats, but vis different viscosity. They measured the viscosity, and here viscosity was not related to gastric emptying. So again, conflicting results. And what about, uh, we also have the nutrients which are absorbed, which can influence uh, so glucose response, fatty acids, and so on. And we know very well that the effect of beta-glucan on uh, blood glucose is very much related to its viscosity. This is studies. Susan Tosh, by the way, Jim is, a, is an expert serial chemist who can measure the viscosity and molecular weight of beta-glucan. And uh, we've shown in these, this series of studies that the glucose lowering effect is directly related to the log of the viscosity, whether you change the dose or the molecular weight of the uh, beta-glucan. So we had developed a hypothesis that consuming oatmeal would reduce food intake at a subsequent meal compared to control cereal, which was cream of rice. And we also thought that uh, the oat beta-glucan, uh, adding oat beta-glucan, would reduce motivation to eat, modulate the PYY and ghrelin, reduce glucose and insulin, and prolong gastric emptying. But all of these effects would be related to the viscosity of the intestinal contents. And this study was called OATSAT, and this was, you can see Susan Tosh here, my colleague Dr. Jenkins. These are uh, our industrial colleagues. This study was done at GI Labs, funded by DSM and PepsiCo. Primary objective was to consume the effect of the, consuming a breakfast test meal of uh, oat beta glucan, different doses relative to cream of rice on food intake as the primary objective. Secondary outcomes are motivation to eat, gut hormones, glucose, insulin, gastric emptying, and the relationship of viscosity. Single blind randomized crossover study it was. We had 28 subjects. They were equally, roughly equally uh, this, uh, males and females, and about half of each sex had a BMI within the, the uh, I, uh, recommended range, and the others were in the overweight category. They had to be unrestrained eaters and did not have diabetes. Uh, we rec we power analysis uh, was that 28 subjects would provide us power to detect 100 calorie difference in, in ad libitum food intake three hours later. Uh, we, and the statistical analysis was to compare the treatments to the control using Dunnett's test to adjust for multiple comparisons. So this was a study design. Uh, we had uh, fasting. We looked at uh, glucose instant gut hormones. We had breath. The gastric emptying was measured using the C13 sodium acetate breath test, collected breath at baseline. 
motivation to eat visual analog scales, and the test meal collected blood samples and breath for three hours. At three hours, we had an ad libitum pizza test meal and continued to collect motivation to eat for another hour, hour and a half. So our test meals consisted differently from the ones I showed you originally. It was not just oats. It was a cereal, but we also had bread, butter, and jam, and we modified the amounts of butter and jam and a little bit of rice protein to make the macronutrient composition and energy e equivalent for the different meals. And this is the C13 sodium acetate for the breath for the gastric emptying measurements. The hot cereals were cream of rice, two grams oat beta glucan, which was 27 grams, one serving of oatmeal, plus three grams of oat beta glucan. We added 10 grams of oat beta glucan to make it four grams of oat beta glucan. And then we used a beta gluconase to hydrolyze the four gram oat beta glucan uh, cereal. So this was incubated in a water bath for half an hour to reduce the molecular weight of the beta-glucan in the cereal. So these meals contained about 375 calories, 16 grams of protein, 12 grams of fat, 51 grams. You can see the, the variation is very slight. And this was the fiber contents, and you can see we, we've had our viscosity measured. The molecular weight is still being measured by Susan Tosh, uh, but uh, Increased viscosity. This was a successful, very successful in reducing the viscosity of that test meal. Study flowchart, we had 33 subjects enrolled and, and five of them dropped out. We analyzed only those 28 who completed successfully. So our primary endpoint was food in, was energy intake, and there was no significant effect of either the oats or the molecular weight, or the viscosity if you like on food intake, and this was not influenced. There was no difference between men and women, no difference between body weight, lean and overweight. So that didn't affect that. Average appetite, subjective satiety, there's a lot of complex data. This is just the average of the four measurements. Uh, was actually no difference between the oat test meals and the control, but within the oat test meals, there's a separate analysis using an ANOVA, we can see that the four gram low molecular weight uh, test meal significantly elicited significantly lower or more satiety than the two grams. So there was evidence here that adding oat beta glucan did reduce, increase satiety, not at all related to viscosity. It was a dose effect. The gut hormones were not uh, significantly influenced by the oat test meals although there tended to be a relationship with um, the viscosity, uh, sorry, with appetite. So they, the one which had elicited more appetite tended to have a lower ghrelin, which is what we would expect, and the cereal which elicited the greatest satiety was, had higher PYY. Not significant, but at least these correlate with what one might expect. Glucose and insulin responses were exactly as we would predict, highly significant reductions of glucose in a dose-related fashion with two and four grams, and when the, this was hydrolyzed, the result was reduced, significant correlation with viscosity. The insulin results were similar. So again, this shows that these test meals were significantly doing what we thought they should do. And this is the gastric emptying, this is the, the curves of C13, uh, CO2, and you can see that as you increase the dose, it went down and we hydrolyzed it, it went back up again. This is a cumulative dose. These are the measures of gastric emptying. Gastric emptying half time significantly increased with the four gram oat beta glucan, an effect moderately related to viscosity. And this is the lag time of emptying significantly increased by the oat beta glucan, and again, both of these uh, not affected when you re reduce the molecular weight, that effect disappeared. So what do we conclude from, from this? Our primary conclusion is that consuming a meal, oatmeal rich in oat beta glucan had no effect on food intake relative to the control. Secondary, there was no effect of 
oat beta glucan on self reported motivation to eat relative to the control, but there was evidence that there was an effect of adding oat beta glucan to the same test meal to, in terms of motivation to eat and reducing, increasing satiety, but this was not related to viscosity. No significant effect on uh, PYY and ghrelin. We did, though, show that it reduced glucose and insulin responses related to viscosity and prolonged gastric emptying in relation to viscosity. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a nice presentation, very interesting study.